Hello and welcome to Red On Air. This is episode four and this week we're going to be talking all about SUP safety. So stay tuned, we're going to be running through everything you need to know and diving into an adventure that you can get involved with. Hello and welcome to this episode four. Like I said in the intro, we're gonna be covering SUP safety along with what to wear and also catching up with the head of the Dart team to talk all about an adventure that you guys can get involved with. Now, we're completely live. I'm George, this is Charlie, and we're in Red HQ. And the point of these sessions is really all about you, the viewers watching. Um, if you've got any questions at all, anything SUP related, you can throw them at Charlie and myself. We're happy to answer them. We'll be getting to questions on the end. I do my laptop just down below me here. So we'll be running through some questions. Um, and yeah, anything you want. If you're a beginner and you're just questioning what board to buy, uh, all the way through to a very advanced uh, technique and also weather tips, all of that stuff. Now, actually, the, I want to start on just the weather. It's amazing. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, especially in the UK, then it's been an awesome week for paddling. And if you're not a part of them, actually, I've just got the screen open. I'm going to try and bring it up here. But the Red Paddle Co. Board Owners Group. Now, if I scroll down, you can just see just how many of you have been getting out on the water. And if you're not part of it, then I strongly recommend that you do join the Red Paddle Co. Board Owners Group. Um, and actually, some of the pictures are fantastic, so inspirational. If I keep going down here, you should see this starfish uh, picture. It just caught my eye completely. And it just summed up summer. And Tookie, you took it. Thank you so much. It's, it's just a fantastic picture. It really inspired me to get out um, and out onto the water there. So, yeah, absolutely brilliant to see so many of you getting on the water. And actually, that's the theme of this week, SUP safety. So we really want to make sure that everyone getting on the water is doing it safely. Um, and we want this message to go far and wide. So, Charlie, you want to tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So during April, we're going to be focusing on um, SUP safety and just really trying to help everybody out there just understand a little bit more about how to be safe when you are getting out on the water, whether you're coming back into paddleboarding after a little bit of a break or you're completely new to paddleboarding. We're here to just really give you some basic top tips um, of how to be safe out on the water. Um, so throughout April, we're gonna be going through um, some of these uh, tips. Um, but for now, John is gonna to introduce to you a little acronym uh, of PLOT. Before you head out to the water, don't forget to plot. P stands for PFD. This is a waist belt PFD. It's great for keeping out of the way, particularly if you're a confident swimmer. If you need it, just pull it out, pull it over your head, and just pull the trigger. If you're not a confident swimmer, then we recommend a buoyancy aid. Great for giving you confidence out on the water. L is the leash. Never go paddleboarding without a leash, but it's important to choose the right type. This is a coiled leash, perfect for flat, still water. This is a straight leash, great if you're heading out into the surf. If you're paddling in flowing water like an estuary, then we recommend a buoyancy aid coupled with a waist belt leash with your leash attached to it. You can then easily pull it off if you get into trouble. O is offshore winds. The winds blowing from the beach out to sea don't go out because that is where you'll end up. And T is the telephone. Always take your phone with you and put it in a waterproof case. Make sure it's fully charged and if you get into trouble, you can always phone for help. If you're in the UK, dial 999 and ask for the Coast Guard. It's also a good idea to tell someone where you're going and what time you're going to be back. So that's it. Time to hit the water. It's a beautiful evening here, and I'm a confident swimmer. So I've got my waist belt PFD. The water is flat, so I've got a coiled leash. The wind is blowing gently onto the shore, and I've got my phone in my pocket. Don't forget to plot before you go paddling. Stay safe and have a great day. So that's John taking us through <laughs> our uh, plot uh, acronym there. So 
Really, we just want to, want to really kind of emphasize that uh, the plot side of this is the absolute basics we would advise you to do. Um, there's obviously a lot more other things to consider when you're going out paddle boarding. Um, but please make sure you follow our social channels all this month and also check out on our website for a lot more, lots more tips and advice. Um, we've actually, over the last week or so, been asking you guys for any advice or tips that you would give to the community about mm. being safe out on the water. So. Mm. We're going to just uh, share some of those because I think we've had some really, really great uh, bits of advice. George? Yeah, for me, one of the, the key bits and actually going back to windsurfing days as well, um, someone came through our US page earlier in the week and mentioned about the importance of um, basically telling someone where you're going and when you're going to be back. Uh, I think that when you're going to be back is just as important as where you're going in the fact that often, you know, a, a paddle for us could be up to a, a few hours at times and it's really important if someone's not a paddler that you explain that you might be out there for a few hours and what to do if you don't contact them and please remember to contact them if you are back on the shore because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the first time that that's uh, happened so yeah always make sure you tell someone where you're going and what time you're going to be back. Um, yeah, we had a really great piece of advice actually from um, one of our followers called Rachel, who suggested um, downloading um, the app What Three Words um, or also Paddle Logger. Just so if you are going out and you do get into trouble, um, leading on from from John's point about taking out a phone with you, if you do have one of these apps, um, then it actually can help locate you if you do get into trouble. So you know, definitely recommend that. And um, we'll put down the links um, in the comments of this uh, live session as well. Yeah, cool. And then Tyler on Instagram, um, he came through and made a great point all about um, basically making sure that you just talk to people. <laughs> uh, he, he, in his words, they don't bite. And I think that's absolutely right. You know, when you get down to the beach, often you'll see other paddlers, other water users. They may know if it's not your local spot, they may know uh, dangers that maybe you can't see, maybe the tide's in or something like that if you're at a beach. Uh, so it's really good just to have a chat with people who might be also getting out there for a paddle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think another great piece of advice was from Jake actually on Instagram, and he was saying about checking your equipment. And the key thing, the thing he recommended was also just checking your equipment before you actually even head out yeah. to the water. So do it at home because we all know what it's like. You maybe get to the river or to the beach and actually something's you know, not quite right or you've forgotten something and you might be like, well, do you know what? Actually, I'll just risk it. It's not worth it. It really isn't. So make sure you check everything before you actually even leave home. Yeah, for, for sure. Stuff doesn't just magically appear like fortunately for John it did in that video. So um, <laughs> yeah, always worth doing that. And then finally for me actually, it's just a case of make sure you get a forecast. In the plot acronym, you know, we say offshore winds. That's the most basic thing you can do. Don't go out on offshore winds. But also if you can, get a local forecast. Uh, it's essential to knowing what's going to happen because the wind may be coming onto the beach when you first paddle out but then it can change during the session and it can change quite quickly, both in speed of wind, water state, all of those things to consider. Uh, like I say, it's just really all about getting out there and we just wanna see more and more people on the water enjoying themselves, but doing so in a safe way. Uh, and actually, at this time of year, the air temperature can get really warm, but this, the water temperature can be quite cold, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then you've had a fantastic summer out on the beaches and things in Australia and stuff. So it, it, not so worried about that for you guys, but <laughs> um, we've actually got a video straight hot off the press. Um, it's from a SUP instructor and uh, it's part of our Red Shorts campaign. So you're gonna see a lot more of these style of videos. They're super bite-sized little nuggets, pretty much covering everything about um, SUP. Anything you can ask, we're gonna cover off going forwards in the next weeks, months. There's already um, 10 live on YouTube and we'll be getting them shared on, on Facebook so you can all see them as well. But I'm gonna pass over to Hayley. She's gonna talk a bit about what to wear at this time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. Hey guys, and welcome to this Red Short. I'm Hayley, one of Red's ambassadors. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what to wear in the winter when paddling. Now, although it's a beautiful day today, that water behind me is a chilly six or seven degrees. So my number one piece of advice for you is to dress for the water temperature, not the air temperature. I think us paddleboarders need to really take cold water shock and the risk of hypothermia really seriously. And that's because we could unexpectedly fall off our boards and find ourselves in trouble if we're not dressed appropriately. So let's talk about what we should be wearing on the water in those colder temperatures. A great option is a dry suit. So this is a one piece full body suit and the feet are built into the suit itself. So the only place that the water can get in is at your neck or on your wrist, which is a rubber seal. So it's basically 100% watertight and it's also not insulated. So that gives you the flexibility to wear as many layers 
underneath the suit as you like to keep you warm on the board. Another option is a wetsuit. So I wear a 4-3 wetsuit in the winter, which again gives me that protection from the cold water if I was to fall in. And I always wear layers on top of my wetsuit to keep me warm on the board, including a breathable waterproof coat uh, just in case it rains, like my favourite red original active jacket. As well as my dry suit or my wetsuit, there are four bits of kit that I never go without in the winter, which is my buoyancy aid to keep me safe, my gloves and my neoprene boots to keep me warm on my board, and my awesome change robe for when I'm off the water. So I hope that helps to keep you safe when paddling and I'm sure you're going to have some awesome, awesome adventures while you're out on the boards in those colder temperatures. So that's it from me guys and I'll see you out on the water. Awesome. Thanks, Hayley. Uh, yeah, amazing information there, actually, uh, and some great advice as well. If you have any, uh, any questions or anything you want us to cover in terms of topics for Red Shorts, just send them in. You can do so in the comments if you're watching this live or on demand or at any point, either through our customer service or on Facebook. We're, we're all up for finding out um, what you want us to cover, and we'll gladly make a video for you. So, yeah. Anyway, enough about uh, what to wear and also SUP safety. Um, I think now it's all about what to do you know we've all been locked in for quite a long long time if anyone's like me and charlie we're itching to get out there and paddle again and uh, and do it so in a social distance way so uh, i'm gonna pass it over to charlie's got a very interesting challenge that everyone can get involved with yeah absolutely if you um a regular viewer of uh, red on air you will have seen a couple of weeks ago robin was talking about um, a virtual paddle challenge um, with the head of the dart um, so it's happening as from uh, from tomorrow, from 1st of April. So it's uh, there's a huge, great big push for everybody else to get involved. Um, so earlier this week, I caught up with Fiona from the Head of the Dark team. Hi, Fiona. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Charlie, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, so Head of the Dart, very exciting um, uh, experience is about to come up, but would you be able to give us some information about what does Head of the Dark normally look like when we're not in this kind of COVID uh, scenario? Yeah, sure. So normally um, Head of the Dart is the sort of season opener um, in April um, and we team up with the rowing clubs um, and hold the event on the Sunday with the rowing clubs on Saturday and alternate between paddling between Dartmouth and Totnes and then Totnes back to Dartmouth. Um, it normally sees around 600, oh, sorry, 265 um, paddlers taking part, um, which makes it the largest event um, spent in the UK. And they'll be from a range of abilities, those looking to take part for the first time, those looking to do it as a leisure, um, and then those looking to race um, to get down the quickest time. So normally it's quite a hectic few days, as a uh, red team know. <laughs> Yeah, I have taken part myself on uh, as part of a dragon team. So four of us on the board. It was absolute chaos. Um, we were awful. We, uh, I think it was it was two years ago, and the weather was was terrible. But yeah, it was really, really, really good fun though. It, 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 Dart is renowned for um, throwing a few weather challenges at paddlers. So ability to paddle into headwinds, side winds, sunshine, and rain, um, and all of the in between is. Uh, some really necessity but it's an amazing event and I think you know, as you said it's one of the, um, it's the biggest sub event um, in the UK and it's a real kind of highlight of the calendar I think for a lot of people that they see it as you know very much that challenge and they want to take part whatever ability it is um, but obviously this year you know no events really going on so what what are you planning this year for um, having that? No so yeah we, we took the decision quite early um, that it wasn't going to be feasible um, and so this year we decided um, to come with a virtual challenge because we wanted to keep people motivated, get people out paddling. Um, and so we came up with the River Challenge where we we're looking to, as a community, um, encourage each other to try and paddle distances um, between April. We've extended it to May because of the lockdown. Um, to see if we could paddle the length of the longest rivers in each continent. So um, we're, we're doing well at the moment. We've, we've paddled down the Volga, 
um, and we're nearly down the Nile, so on that last little push. Um, and then to add that extra incentive, um, you're not charging in anything to for anybody to enter. It's open to everyone, whether it's young or old, um, wherever you are in the world. But we're just asking um, for one pound per kilometre that you paddle to be raised a sponsorship to go to that will be split between the RLNI and Surface Against Sewage. Fantastic. So essentially, people can just go out there. They can go and paddle. Can do they have to do it in one big chunk, or can they kind of split it over a distance? They can split it. So, um, you know, from the 1st of April to the end of May, if they sign up for 10K, they could do 10 paddles, 1K each. Or if they want to sign up for 100K and do 20K paddles each week, it, it's really up to um, the individuals and whether they want to do it as a leisure paddle, whether they want to do it as a timed event, whether they want to in their groups of six paddle, then, yeah, it, it's up to them. Amazing. And so essentially all of these kilometres are all just going to be kind of accumulating together and going towards this, you know, hopefully this massive goal of, of everybody paddling together. Yes. Yeah, indeed. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully then for each K, then that turns into a pound. And then, um, yeah, we'll be able to donate some money um, to R&I and subsequent sewage. Fantastic. Oh, it's so good bringing everybody together. And how do people sign up to uh, take part? Um, really easy um they just go to our website um which is www.headofthedartsop.com and from there there is a link um it's free to enter you just can um state how many kilometers you are going to commit to paddle during the course of the challenge fantastic and i hear there's a there's a nice little incentive for those uh people wanting to kind of you know get some proper kilometers in what, what about that yes so um we've got two prize draws so for paddlers that paddle more than 30k during the challenge, they will get entered into Paddler Draw, where we've got prizes um, from Red, uh, Starboard, we've got Paddle Logger, giving a pro, a pro subscription, um, we've got Subboarder prizes, we've got sub Scrub, we've got um, video coaching session from Hayward Sports, um, copies of David Price's books, um shorties some eco-friendly sub clothing um and i know all paddlers love um a little bit of gin so we have some silk and gin prizes as well i think that's a good enough incentive isn't yeah it? and um and then if you're part of a sub club and you as a community within your sub club paddle more than 150 kilometers then you'll go into another prize draw um, where the club has a chance of winning um, some paddles for the club um, from Starboard and if it's a Nash club from a, a Nash paddle. Amazing. That's so good. Brilliant. Well, we need to get our red team signed up still. I know we need to do that. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, hopefully we'll get lots and lots of people who are watching this from the red community signing up to take part in the virtual Head of the Dark Challenge. Um, we'll include all the links on this uh, Facebook Live. And uh, thank you so much for your time, Fiona. And um, good Pleasure. Luck everything. Thank you. Just so it doesn't look like you're um, <laughs> doing emails. <laughs> Hi guys, great. Thank you, Pete. Um, right, head of the dart, I'm in. I'm actually planning a quite a long paddle and so hopefully some of you will also uh, feel inspired by that to get involved. Um, during that clip, we had a question come in and right now we've got a, a great opportunity to answer any of your questions. The question that came in is actually quite technical. Uh, it's about touring, but also a board that will then double up as a active or yoga board. Now, uh, it really depends on quite how much you want to do of one or the other. So if you're looking to do the majority of touring um, and do a bit of yoga, or you're actually quite advanced um, in yoga in terms of, you know, you've done more than say 10 sessions at yoga and, and you're looking to really go to the next level in terms of balance, then what you're looking for is just a board with enough width to be able to do that. So my recommendation would probably be the 11.3 Sport, which hopefully we can bring up on the screen now. The 11.3 Sport is 32 inches wide, so it's the same width as our 10.6 Ride Board, which many people do use for SUP yoga. But being 11 foot 3 inches long, you're also getting the benefit of that extra length. So it's going to give you that glide, it's going to give you that speed, uh, and you're going to be able to go that distance. So yeah, my recommendation really for if you're looking to do some SUP yoga and touring in almost equal measure, then the 11.3 Sport would definitely be my recommendation. That comes in both a special edition colourway and also blue, so purple or blue colourways as well for you to choose from. 
If you've got any other questions at all, please just uh, drop them in the comments and we can come back to you at a later time. Um, so looking ahead, we will be back on air in two weeks time. And that session is gonna be focused very much on um, beginners getting into paddleboard. So we're gonna be going through which board is right um, for you if you're just starting out in paddleboard boarding and we'll go through our ride range. Um, so yeah, if you yourself or any of your friends or family are not quite sure about which board to buy, then tune in in two weeks time and we'll be going through that. Yeah, nice one, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah. Um, if anyone's watching this on demand, the comments are always there. We're always monitoring them. So please do feel free to drop in any questions later on. And also, if you have any specific questions about which board you would like to buy or what you, if you've got any questions actually like that one we came in, which are maybe a bit more complex, then we have our personal shopper feature as well, a virtual shopping experience in which you can either book a call or have a personalized video back to you. You can find that on the website, click on Ask the Experts and you can fill in the form there. So yeah, if you've got any complex questions, check out our personal shopper feature and we'll be very happy to help guide you in your decision making towards finding that perfect board. But otherwise, enjoy the weather, especially for those of you who are in Northern Hemisphere as it starts to warm up. Enjoy the Easter weekend that's coming up and uh, we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.